Venom first appeared on the big screen in Spider-Man 3, which fits in the we pretend it never happened category of comic book films. Who? Oh! When it was announced that actor Tom Hardy was cast as Eddie Brock, I posted this to Instagram. Because like Todd McFarlane, I was happy to finally see the character portrayed by someone with some bulk. You were happy when, to, when you saw right, it, for sure, right? Right, right, he, right, he, right when he, there was a presence to him, yeah. right? But from an objective standpoint, was Grace better? Let's weigh the pros and cons. Skinny Venom, as I'll be referring to him from here on out, while inaccurate in many ways, does have some pros going for him. As Screen Rant pointed out in an article, Skinny Venom has a connection to both Peter Parker and his alter ego Spider-Man, something Hardy's version was sorely lacking. Oh, Parker, you are such a boy scout. When are you gonna give a guy a break? This connection is a vital part to what made Venom an appealing character. He hates Spider-Man. Look, I want to kill the spider. You want to kill the spider. However, it also fails in the execution. Spider-Man 3 presents Brock as a photographer who isn't shy about fabricating evidence and flat out lying to climb up the corporate ladder. Your picture is a fake. Look, I'm begging you. If you do this, I will lose everything. There's not a paper in town that will hire me. You should have thought of that earlier. When he's exposed, his career goes down the drain. In the comics, however, Brock was a journalist with integrity, and his career was only ruined when he wrongly deduced and published the identity of the criminal Sin Eater, only to be proven wrong when the actual killer was apprehended. So that's definitely a con on Skinny Venom for turning Eddie into a fraud. Next. The Symbiote. In the comics, Eddie bonds with the Symbiote. Spider-Man 3 pays homage to the 90s animated series by having Eddie bond with the Symbiote in a church after Peter Parker painfully discards it. The new symbiotic being then picks the moniker Venom as its goal is to poison everything in Peter Parker's life. In Hardy's case, the symbiote already bears the name Venom and its own very apparent personality. I am Venom, and you are mine. So that's a pro for Skinny and a definite storytelling con for Hardy's. Once again, this fails in execution, however, as the design of Skinny Venom is, well, skinny. That didn't sit too well with Venom's co-creator, comic book legend, Todd McFarlane. I drew Venom. You can see he's a big physical presence. And for me, artistically, I intentionally created a character that was going to be massive. Because I just wanted it to be that if it was going to be a hand-to-hand a, a -hand fight between Spider-Man and Venom, Peter Parker loses every single time. You can't beat him in the ring. He will knock you out. You're a featherweight. This is a heavyweight. You lose. So now you're going to have to figure out another way to beat the guy. I wanted him to be big. And he was always big. In my mind, he was big. Now all of a sudden I got Topher. He's on screen. It's Spider-Man 3. I'm going, here it goes. And I go, okay. Now the black's coming up, his legs. And I'm going, okay, he's going to grow. And then it's up to the torso. And I go, no, no, no. He's okay. He's, oh, they're going to wait for a long time. But it's a time to grow. And it gets up to his neck. And I go, what's happening? He's not growing. <laughs> and then it just goes. And I go, it's just Topher with black right. on him. I go, no, 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 no. And they made him big. So for me, my I go, shoot, I like the movie. I'm completely biased. I like the movie because he's big. <laughs> Next, Impact. Screen Rant asserts that the one thing Skinny Venom had going for him was that he was unlikable to audiences. I have to disagree with them on that. While Venom caused Peter nothing but trouble, that never meant we were supposed to hate the character. 
As I previously stated, Eddie wasn't the kind of guy who would resort to fraud, so I don't see how this is a win for Skinny. That gives him another con. So, as the tally states, Hardy Venom is superior. I, I, I got my Venom. I got my Venom in the Tom Hardy version, the Ruben Fleischer version. I, I, I got it. I go, there, that's what I designed 30 years ago. That guy right there. But honestly, even if the tally was in Skinny's favor, I still personally prefer Hardy's. He actually looks like an imposing character. Huge, deep voice, and you can't have Venom without the tongue. I just hope that in future movies they give him better stories because Lethal Protector is still one of the most meh Venom stories out there, but not as bad as the FBI story. That's my two cents. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and remember, please subscribe.